I'm speaking reality. I'm not saying I'm speaking reality words that we're attacking our culture. What can we do to minimize what we're seeing on Facebook and Instagram? Was that when we see these youth on there with guns, how can we go in and shut it down for you? I think you, that's what I'm saying, man. I'm going to ask you personally to get back to your question. So, not just, not just what you see on Facebook, on Instagram, whatever. So, what about when you have a 13 year old, 14 year old, 15 year old?
So I already knew that they were beat. I already knew that they were going to fight. They talked about this Tuesday on Instagram. So I knew. So if I tell the people at the school and they don't listen to me, they know not going to do Right? So when the fight actually breaks out, and instead of two groups of kids, it becomes 20, 30 kids versus 20, 30 kids fighting in the street, there's really not much you can do. And the result of the police and the security and some of public schools not being prepared, they pushed the kids three, four blocks down the streets. And so it started, you know, uh, about Cavity, and then it, it got all the way down, I mean, not Cavity, but close to Delmore, all the way down to Page. And what they saw was somebody who wasn't involved in the shoot getting shot and killed. Right? And so, yeah. The community can finally figure out some of the solutions, but the next question is then what do we do? So if I find out if I find, if I find out that short kill somebody, you know, accidental purpose, what am I supposed to do with it? Like like the sister said is like, if I go report it to someone, I go to the police. Well a lot of times the police is not responding to me in a way when I had something to say to prevent the murder. But now it's a punishment coming with you, and this person needs to be held accountable. So, I, you know, my question is, just a show of hands, you know, who's in favor of turning that person in to the police? Okay. Huh? Yeah, so I mean, so there's always, there's always the yin and the yang. So you can turn them into the police, right? And that person, could or could not go to jail because, like she said, the witness might be tampered with or might get scared or might have insufficient evidence or whatever, right? Or the alternative is that the community can do something about it. And I'm not saying that always going to be violent, but the community can do something about it. And there are alternatives around housing, jobs, and other things that they can, and those are some of the things that can uh, be
was trying to hear everybody back and forth. So I heard both reasons. Right? But in the fourth ward, some live that shine go at it every year for the homecoming game. It's never an incident. It's and it's wild about we and they saw they see so every year we had that in the fourth war, it'll never be a, a shot of right. that shot is something right. in the field. Okay. So, I know. So on a, so it can't uh, be on, on the jamboree, on the jamboree, those are like so the same thing as uh, Turkey Bar, Turkey Bar, the same thing as like, so uh, I don't think it's it's eliminated. I just think the tradition should be protected. So if you go to uh, Western Kirkwood Games, it's a tradition and it's protected. So I, I, I'm not going to place the blame on you. I'm not trying to, but that Japanese should be protected. Exactly. From the so this is a tradition that goes on every year. Every year. year. The, 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 the second to last week of August, these teams get together every year to play this Japanese. So, so they, they absolutely know that the thing is going to be that Japanese is going to happen. Like I said, this is tradition. So if you go to any, any other community, mm -hmm. the tradition is going to be protected. Yeah. That's, that's the problem. Need so to so we, we, don't need to we don't need to eliminate, we don't need to eliminate the, the opportunity for the kids. We just need to protect them. So it, it's, it's simple. I mean, it's simple. It's simple. Uh, St. Louis, St. Louis Public Schools, security, St. Louis, they're not controlled. Yeah. So St. Louis Public Schools are not the right way. If, if, just imagine, just imagine if there were, just imagine if there were ten St. Louis Police City uh, suburbans out before the game. You know what I'm saying? Just lined up outside the game. It, it, it might, it might, it might not have happened. It might not have happened. So we just need to protect, protect these traditions. Right? So, yeah. Yeah, so I mean, they responded to it. No, I mean, you are 100% right. So I, the background is different. So I just want to be clear about the background. So Summoner does not have a football team. For the first time in over 150 years, the only public school, public high school team in the city of St. Louis that has multiple state championships don't have a football team, right? So all the state championships in the city is gone. They are forced to merge with their rivals, which is so dead which has about four rival games against each other, west side versus north side. That's the first problem. The second problem is northwest is also forced to merge with Michon. So you have downtown and further northwest or north area around Goodfellow and those things. So you have, uh, we have four schools combined to play football um, into two schools. And inside of each school, you have rivals, right? So. And on the team, people may have cousins, brothers, whoever, who are in another district, right? So what happened is this summer, one of the kids on the football team, little brother, got jumped. So when we knew that they were going to show up to the game, we already knew what was going to happen. So we called the administrators, like, hey, um, these kids over here are talking about they're going to fight, so and so and so on. You might want to address this, right? Never got to, never got back from the athletic director, which I think most of this and all of this falls in the athletic director's lap. And then, you know, I'm going I'm to call names. So, Ms. Short, uh, Teron Short, the athletic director for the city of St. Louis, um, she had no count, crowd control. She had the least amount of security. And so the difference between a, a Works of Grove and Kirkwood Turkey Day game or a Sumner versus Shine game is that's that times four. So you don't just have one game. You got four games going on. So that means you got four schools. And then some of the schools are combined. So you got eight schools with two supplemental schools. So that's ten schools. So that's the whole metro area in one area. And they don't have the security. And they had no conflict resolution. They didn't have no conflict resolution. They didn't have police standing by. They didn't have crowd control. They didn't have they didn't have no scenes or no code of conduct before the kids got there. Nor did they have an alternative. So one thing that we did talk about was the only thing that most of the, most of the youth in the city has to look forward to is a football game. The reason being, because because it ain't no it ain't no skating parties, it ain't no dancing parties, it ain't no come uh, just be fresh and look cute kind of parties. It's the football game. And so since you don't have any alternatives to the non-athletic kids. 
they left out there. And then one big thing that I think we lose um, between football is that outside of the football, it's, it's young ladies who don't get to dance and don't get to be cheerleaders. And so the vast majority of the fights yesterday were with young ladies with idle hands and idle minds. And so if you look it up, it's, I'm talking about it was, it was 20 girls fighting on each other. Like people laying on top of each other, fighting each other, rolling down the street. They don't have anything. So, and those girls are somewhere in Northwest and the Shine girls. So the Vashon girls don't have a, they didn't have the dance team out there. The Sumner girls don't get to be truly just because they don't have a football team. So you leave, you leave the community with idle hands. Yeah, so I mean you. Yeah, so so dance field is as small as can dance in its force. So so dance football field is set up just like this. Right? This is the football field. This is the stadium. This is the seat. There are no seats on the other side. So if I hate you, I have to sit next to you. And then when they ran out of seats, just like now, if people are standing in front of you, you can't see the game. So that creates a higher level of frustration. The athletic director, uh, Teron Sharp, she was there the entire time. So then is our alma mater. So she wanted to put it at so then for the revenue for our school. So it backfired on it. So now she has, you know, blood on her hands. So what I'm saying is, is that you could have used Sumner, you could have used Roosevelt. I would have said, I'm gay way, but, but I, I'm, a, I'm like you. I work with the elected officials. I would rather use this dome this down here. I would use the dome. So if I would do something different, I would mix and match, and I would have a whole metro. And so I would have it from the city to the pool north to Hazelwood. We would just play games all weekend at the dome and mix and match people at different times so you don't have that, that proximity of hate, that proximity of anger, right? And then you'll have an event. And then I will play a separate event for you to do something else, dance, skate, or whatever. So I can separate those who love sports and those who want to have some different kind of activity. So that's what I would do, just to, um, you know, give an alternative. So, um, so one more time, my name is Reed Chang. Um, former president of the Semper Fidelis Pre-Law Society at Harris Stone State University. Um, as, a, as a point of action, is it possible that, that we can talk to not only the mayor, because I believe that holds people accountable, right? So if you have a city that, that's full of violence and that's continually having violence and the violence is perhaps accelerating, I haven't looked at the data. Um, so if you're over that city, then you should be held accountable. Exactly. Um, but in addition to that, that because the, the superintendent, St. Louis Public exactly. Schools, is over all the school yeah. districts. They should also be held accountable. I mean, they, they, they should, but if, if you're in, if you're, uh, in control of policing this specific event, if that event goes awry, then unfortunately that's under your belt. Regardless if it was, if it was your fault directly, it's still under your belt and you need to be held accountable. So is it possible for us to not only go to the city hall, but also go to the, uh, uh, the headquarters uh, St. Louis Public School and demands to talk to whoever is in charge. Because I, I, I appreciate everybody coming out, but I think there's so many meetings where we need to give ideas, where we say, this is what I feel like, this is what's happening, this is what's going on, that everybody goes home without something to do. I like to go home with something to do. I don't like idle hands. If I can make a change, I want to make that change. So, Tori Russell, since you're in charge, like I was saying, I don't want to overstep anybody who but like, uh, what, what can we do? Not, I'm not controlling the meeting. But what can we do um, going on, even with this conversation, to hold people accountable so that um, so we have a point of action? I, I, okay, so I'm, I'm gonna let you. I'm gonna let you speak briefly, and then we can try to address some action items. I know y'all y'all came for action items. I would like to have to shut the whole street down and cause a little disruption so we can have a conversation. But yeah, yeah. Okay, hello? Okay, I'm speaking as a parent that was there. Um, okay, my name is Bree, uh, or Westside, or uh, Bree, or Jay Scott, however you uh, But uh, as a parent who was there with my 
kids. I saw parents dropping off kids. And when my kids telling me like they couldn't take their little brother. When my kids telling me they couldn't take their little brother because, you know what I'm saying, they was like, you can't watch him. So that made me go like, why he can't go? You know what I'm saying? It's a game, it's a kids. And then when I got there, I saw what they was talking about. And so I feel like they was charging the kids three dollars and the parents five dollars. The parents should have got it free. We needed more parents there because the kids that was out there was out there without a parent. Now somebody asked me where your kids was at, right behind me in lockstep in March mode, right behind me, all of them. And I feel like St. Louis Public Schools is not open to parents. They are not welcoming to parents. These state laws take your rights away so you can't look the kids. Then when they rob old people and shoot somebody, then you want me to give them. So it's a lot of things that need to be changed, but for people to point the finger, it's the friends, it's the school, it's the police, it's all of us. It's all of us. It ain't no them, us, we, it's all of us. So we all gotta stand up. They need to have friends free. They need to let you know, you got, when your kids, you come with your kids. You help us to get this under control because that's what it's gonna take. It's gonna take all of us. It's gonna take white people, talking to racist ass white people and letting them know that white supremacy gotta go. It is fucking up our whole planet. It's got to go. It's got to go. So that's all I gotta say. It's got to go. Okay. We can go home now. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. So, uh, you know, read, you know, read, you know, um, I got you. Oh, shit. Uh, I think there are things that the community can address. I think there are policies and law. So that's why we kind of reached out and had people to bring different people to the table who probably never sat down so that we can sit down and actually just build out and push on things. I, I don't really think that it's not solutions. We can pass this uh, megaphone around to anybody. I'm pretty sure people have a sufficient uh, solution. Right? I think it's the best thing to do is to support the solution that's already presented. And just push them in the right? right? So hold on. So the first thing that you can do, your first action item, uh, Gary, mm -hmm. you gonna take that? So uh, Wednesday, six thirty, high stone. Six thirty, high stone. So, uh, so, just Uh, I think left, local elected officials, uh, the president of the African American Conference, Jeffrey Board, uh, all of this, uh, John Thomas Muhammad, and other elected officials, right? Not even some state reps will be there. And so it's a way that we can directly address the policy makers and introduce policy, right? So, as a person involved in the grassroots movement, I know what happens. Uh, we bring attention to the problems that we get fed up, and then the policymakers create their own policy above our policies, right? We, I don't think that we should allow it. So I think Lacey Clay's thing is it's good, right? But that's just some things that you can miss. So there are some ways that if we show up in force Wednesday, we can tell you to do this, do this, and do that, right? Because you can have the, the, the parameters of local control, but if you're not banning assault rifles, I don't know what you're talking about, right? If you don't have a red flag law, I don't know what you're talking about, right? And so there are maybe gaps, and there may be ways that we can restructure the pre-existing deal, or you can just, you know, champion us as our elected officials. So that's first. So that's 630 at Stoke. That's August 28th, if you would like to go. I think that's the first thing. I think the second thing is, uh, like Reed said, 
we need to demand an emergency meeting with the superintendent. Yeah, so she's the so each school has an athletic director, and then the district has an athletic director, which I it sounds like bureaucracy to me. And so I think that would be more of a secretary, but we'll, we'll argue about that later. My name is Teron, T E R O T E R O N Sharp. No, she's she's for the whole district, so she coordinates everything. So if 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 you are upset that there's not enough security at the games, it's short. It's not Gateway AD. It's not Sumner AD. It's her. I employ administrators and teachers in the St. Louis Public School. She does not uh, return my calls. So she doesn't do it. Because I'm a person who, for the last two years, has been fighting for this. So she, she is aware. And if she's not aware, right? She's aware that you need more security. She, she was aware that there was too many people in the stadium. Because she was there. Because it's not like she wasn't there. She was physically exoting while the incident was going on. Correct. And so if we have a if we call for an emergency meeting, we don't wait for the three weeks for the next school board meeting. We publicly ask for an emergency meeting with the superintendent where she is there, where she has to answer questions with the elected school board on top of that. Because we want to know where everybody stays, right? So I want to know where the superintendent stays, right? So we call for her being to be fired. Let that be the solution, and then we need to work through the process with the elected school board. What do they stand? Do they believe that someone should be fired or reprimanded for a life being lost, for an event that they put on for not being secure, and for activities being pulled from from, from educational institutions that don't provide an outlet for you, right? So I think that's one thing that we should do. And so if you have an organization or ways that we should sign up, we should sign these people up. Where in which we can all mutually push. So I know I will put this out. I'll stop the march um, on Facebook and all those things. But if you have a website or whatever, you also put those things out. So that's the truth. Um, yeah, I mean, we do I mean, it's 801. I, I need to get the uh, exact address. So in the district, we have a joke. If, if you want to raise here, you just go to 801. Um, another thing. Yeah, yeah. Uh, another thing is we we have good numbers today. We had a good conversation, but we should push for a date about a month out to duplicate this and be this follow up. Right. So it's it's not just enough to have a conversation, but it's enough. I mean, it, it's a more impactful conversation if we can push out to the streets and end with the conversation. Right. Right. Um, I I think it. So I, I give you the metaphor for one of the key. So what happens is a lot of times is that while things are going on to other people, you have the opportunity to just go out and buy it. So if you have the opportunity to go buy it, then you can ignore it, right? And so one of the key would always say that sometimes as a protest or a movement, we have to mobilize to be an ambulance for our community. And so a lot of times things go on you can go on about it. But when the ambulance comes, everything must stop. Right? And so that means whatever's in the back of this ambulance is very important. So it doesn't matter who has the right of way at that point. It doesn't matter about the stop line, stop lights or the street signs. It's an emergency going on. And for us to really go into the attention of the entire state metro area, we have to be disruptive. And we have to get the attention of thousands of people, tens of thousands of people, right? So if we would have been very disruptive, if we would have had thousands of people on the street, we would further dictate what's going on Wednesday, what goes on in City Hall, with Light of Crucis, $1.7 million of public safety dollars that's not been allotted, right? And so those are things that are going on right in front of us. But if we're not organized or mobilized enough to be disruptive to put that on their agenda. So they see us, the media was here, um, they got their little pics and then they moved on.
But if it's hundreds of thousands of people in the street, the same way as Ferguson, the same way as the Watch by Lives, then you get a different ear and you get a different, different action from the people that we want to punish. They don't listen when it's they don't listen when it's, but when we disrupt, or, or when we stop the like today, we had an opportunity to slow up and really cause confusion around the corner. If you stop some of those things or postpone it, they have a different Right? If you stop some of this flow of traffic just to have a conversation, People have to make a left right turn and go around. It's a little inconvenience, but Xavier and Sonya, whose funeral is going on at the same time right now, the seven year old that's killed in North St. Louis, his family is way behind inconvenience. And so we want to use every tool, every weapon that we have to get our message out and get some action and, and, and get some results. Is that adequate to you? Or what um, Nope, I'll be meeting my new boss. And those who can't physically come. 
And if you can't physically come, right, please have a phone call, have a conversation. Yeah, they open up at 9 o'clock. So you can, yeah. If you physically can come down at 801 North 11th Street at 9 a.m. when they open up, please come down and bring some people down there to ask the question of uh, Mrs. Short, which is the athletic director of the school district, and also Dr. Kelly Adams, which is the superintendent of public schools. Um, what happened? Um, why did it happen? And had those public uh, questions answered? If not, then please call and email those two people. Which is uh, Tavern Shaw, short, which is the athletic number. I'm going to keep saying it because that person needs to be held accountable. Um, flood, flood emails, flood the phones, and call her to answer those questions. Also, Dr. Kevin Adams, he's the man in charge, so that means he needs to also answer those things to see if those things are open and what they're playing for. So that's that. And so, and then also, I, short hands, I think that. They need to respond to us really in the next week to set up an emergency meeting to answer those questions in public. And those meetings they usually happen about 6 o'clock at 8 on 1. So, so are we going to be asking them to set up an emergency meeting? Yes. Okay, so that's what we're going to do on Monday. Yeah, so Monday we're going to go down there to ask for an emergency meeting. All the other people who are calling, they also regard to how many regards to repeat that we have asking for an emergency meeting this week. Right? Or, or whatever social media platform. Oh, oh so my name personally is T O R Y Tory, and then it's Russell R U S S E L L. Uh, so I mean, it repeated T O R Y uh, Russell R U S S E L L. Right, so that's one way, and we're gonna reach out to other organizations. Um, to put out the same Bring this to a head so, now, y'all. Um, yeah, we gathered at the old courthouse today to, uh, for a rally to discuss stopping the violence in St. Louis, you know, how uh, it's really gotten out of hand, you know, and so we down here trying to come up with a solution, come up with answers. We just a group of people, you know, that just decided, hey, we're going to spend our Saturday morning talking to other people who have had enough of the senseless violence that's going on in the community. And so we came out this morning, you know, to hang out and discuss it. You know, it was great. You know, we all were able to introduce ourselves. You know, we all come from all different walks of life. You know, we all participated in the conversation. You know, uh, I don't know where we're going from here, you know, but I, I know this is a start, you know, to get people to to talking about it, you know. Um, so today, this Saturday morning, you know, this group of people decided, you know, hey, I want to come out and join others, you know, that's concerned and want to discuss what this issue is, you know. So uh, been there since the beginning, you know, I'm going to hang a little while longer, you know, but I'm going to have to end the live feed shortly. You know, but uh, I tried to cover as much of it as I could. You know, this is something serious, St. Louis. This is something serious. You know, not only in St. Louis, it's in other urban areas all across the country. You know, it's a plague. It's like an epidemic. You know, why are we killing each other? What's causing the violence? You know, uh, I, I get it. You know, the, the world is not, is not a very, very nice place right now. You know, everyone is so mean, you know, there's no love, there's no compassion, you know, everybody's so angry. Yeah, we're going to close it out, but we're going to close it out with a date. We got a lot going on in the world right now, you know, everybody, rightly so, probably should be mad about a lot, should be angry, you know, but whatever it is, you know, is is causing us to kill ourselves and kill each other, you know, uh, and so... That's why we're here this morning. We're here this morning, you know, to to come together. You know, I, I would say, everybody here, you know, let's just change contact, you know, 
and let's 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 make a commitment to come back. Let's make a commitment to me, you know, in two weeks, you know, and discuss what we as individuals can work on. You know, what a you know, we all have different gifts, you know, we all good at different little things. You know, let's let's agree to come back, you know, and and just agree to work on this. You know, what can we all offer? You know, what can we all put toward this this effort that we can put toward this movement? You know, so but we shouldn't let this crowd go to waste. You know, so again, these are all people that were, were concerned this Saturday morning and wanted to come out, you know, to talk about, you know, stopping the violence in St. Louis. All right, I'm going uh, I'm to network a little bit myself, you know, because I, I definitely don't want to lose contact with a lot of people. So, again, this is every gorilla. <laughs> you know, I'm always in the midst. So, I got to go right now. Peace.